Hi, I'm Mateusz from Board Game Colors, and today we're gonna paint two characters from Nemesis. Ladies and gentlemen, let me show you how I painted Soldier and Scientist. In this painting series, my intention was to focus on the speed painting aspect. And I think I did, at least in most cases. But I forgot one of the most important things you will usually do when you decide to paint this way. I already painted a few board games and armies. Some as commissions, some for myself. In all of those, time aspect was of high importance. If I spent 3, 4 or even 5 hours per mini, it would take me years to paint some of them. And do you know what helped me? Batch painting. And what is it? I'm glad you asked. It's basically a painting strategy where you don't really paint one mini from start to finish, but work on many of them at the same time. Let me show you. So we have those two gentlemen under our brush. And I know two isn't really a batch, but that's what I have left to paint. We need to start by deciding what those two minis have in common. For me it is armor, weaponry and equipment. I'm going to paint them in the same way, with dark metallics and some lights here and there. Now we have to decide in what order we will proceed. The first thing I asked myself was if painting an armored area will make something else harder. And yes, soldier's suit parts are abstracted by his hands and weapon. So I should probably start there. On the other hand, I plan to paint scientists in light colors, so if I have to paint dark ones later, I might destroy what I've already done. As for final touches like lights, skin and soldier's visor, I'm going to save them for the last. They will be the main focus of the viewer, and I want to spend a little more time on them, to ensure final result. So let's proceed with painting the soldier's suit. I'm going to use Scale Color Artist Red and Ink Density Red as my main color. Citadel Troll Slayer Orange for my highlights and Liquitex Subgreen to mix my shadow colors. Yes, you heard me correctly, green. I'm recently experimenting with using complementary colors in shadows. See, when I mixed green with red, I received really nice warm brown. I used those colors the same way I did in my previous videos, starting with shadows, then midtones and highlights. But this time I finished it up with a wash made from diluted red ink. Then I followed with armor parts. I prepared them with scale color abyssal blue in both figures. With the scientist I took some extra current to paint over his body, so I have less work later on. After that I applied anthrax metal from Grim Stuff World, leaving recesses, and highlighted the edges with citadel runefang steel. Next I used Liquitex Carbon Black ink to paint over it and when it was dry used Runefunk once again on the edges. Generally I use this tactic only for speed painting. You can use washes or citadel shades instead of inks depending on what effect you want to achieve. Inks grant you greater coverage and can work as filters, if you want to change a tint of your metallic parts. Washes help you define recesses and edges a little better. 
I think that one thing is very important here. Try not to paint whole armor and weaponry areas with metallic paint. Leave some lines and recesses painted with some dark tone. Also, it doesn't need to be black. I would say some warm or cold grey like my favorite abyssal blue works even better, because they will nicely blend together with metallics under an ink or wash. The final definition with edge highlight is a matter of preference, but I like them shiny. If you want to learn and understand painting with metallics a little better, just let me know. I can make a little more focused video on this topic in the future. In the meantime, I can recommend you two videos that are great on this subject. First by New John and second by Zatkaz Goon Miniatures. Both of them might change the way you see painting with true metallic metals. There are also some great articles on Massive Voodoo blog. I link them all in the description. When metallic parts were drying, it was a time to paint scientist suit. I don't like it to be pure white. In general, I tend to avoid it in my painting, because it rarely can be spotted in nature. I decided that cold, bluish white will work better. To mix it, I used Vallejo Glacier Blue and Scale Color Abyssal Blue. I started with shadow color, but as you can see, it is still quite bright. Then I continued as usual with highlighting. One thing necessary here was some black lining, to add some definition to the details. Probably, if you have seen my previous videos, you already know that I won't use pure black to this. For the same reason I'm not using pure white. I simply added some abyssal blue to the shadow color to darken it up and painted some recesses with detailed brush. After that I painted face, light and reflections the same way as previously, so please check up my previous videos, especially about mechanic and soldier. You just need to remember, I'm focusing on the time aspect rather than quality. Ok, now I will leave you with some painting footage in the background and let's talk some more about patch painting. When you're painting a set of minis, you can treat them individually or as a whole picture. If you want to paint them fast, the latter is usually a better approach. Before you start, you can think about a strategy. Look for similarities, a color scheme for equipment, etc. You might consider painting whole minis with inks, filters on contrast paints to speed it up and maybe then finish up the details, just as I did in my Aliens painting tutorial. If you feel uncomfortable with planning or simply like to spend some more time with a single model, you might consider using a time when your paint dries to touch some other areas or minis. Or maybe you have too much paint on your palette and you don't want it to go to waste. Ok, enough for today. Here you can see my soldier and scientist finished and ready to join the crew. This video concludes my guide series about Nemesis. I'll show you a crazy space cut conversion in the near future, but for now I'll focus on some other projects. You might also consider subscribing to this channel. Craig from London didn't. And when he received his latest Kickstarter, he noticed that one of the mini's arm was broken. Forgot the cut thinks there is connection. So why take a risk? 
see you next week. <laughs>